Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are here at the uh, Small Cells World Summit 2015 in London's Docklands and I'm talking with Art King who is Director of Enterprise at Spider Cloud Wireless. Art, thanks for talking to us, good to see you. Our pleasure to be here. First one of the day, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, interestingly, off camera you were talking to me just now and um, we were talking about changes in the industry, virtualization, small cells, etc. We'll get into that in more detail at the moment. But first of all, you've just done some research in concert with Intel and with Cisco, which seemingly proves that the emerging market is no longer an emerging market, it is a maturing market. So tell us about that. Yeah, so we, we did research and we were looking at the both the receptiveness of the enterprise market to, to services from the operator, but also um, the, the kind of uh, basket of services they might be interested in to change their, their buying model. You know, we, we, we look at the, the future as um, the, the, the buying model going from a 80% uh, capex purchasing process right now with buy, build, run to the ability for enterprises to buy a lot of these services at about 80% uh, opex. And what, what we discovered in the research, and this was pointed out by Ian Gillett, is we see, or he, he, he saw a 60% a response of people that are willing to buy now and are willing to entertain services from operators now. And it was it was a surprising data point because it, it, it coming out of that research because no one knew what the the market receptiveness would be at this point in time. When you say they're willing to buy now and they're receptive, etc., what services, what applications, what technology are we talking about? Uh, we looked at uh, uh, content filtering. We looked at caching. We looked at local offload. Uh, we looked at uh, uni unified communications integration, and just a, a whole set of uh, tools to not only reduce capital costs for enterprises, but also a way to uh, eliminate. Um, uh, a lot of the user interface issues that the present technologies have around the usability of the device. You know, we're, we're looking at the emergence of a, not just an enterprise with wireless, but a true mobile enterprise where your office is all in your pocket now. More and more people are doing that um, all over the world, certainly in Europe and yeah. North America they are, so it's a, it's a coming thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now, let's talk about small cells. We're here at this Small Cells World Summit. Um, Small cells have been around for a good old while now, um, but they've gone through several iterations and changes, of course, you would, adaptations as you would expect. Yep. Where do you think small cell technology will be in five years' time, in 2020? Normally in this industry, people rarely look forward more than a year, year and a half, because it's so dynamic and changes so quickly. Right. But in this case, there's a lot of evidence that the, the entire industry is looking forward five years to 2020. We hear about Network 2020 or the 2020 Network. That combined with virtualization, the cloud, SDN, NFV, and the emergence of 5G seems to be focusing attention very much on 2020. Where do you think we'll be then? So, first of all, the, the focus on, on small cells. I, I live in the enterprise world primarily in large public venues and structures. Our, our technology scales from about 5,000 square meters to, say, say 150,000 square meters. So we're designed for very large structures. Sure. Um, 5G is calling for a foundation underneath all the services of awesome coverage and capacity. And you know we're we're part of laying that foundation and kind of paving the road for a lot of the other services to run on top of. So you know, like it or not, you know you get, you got to have all the fundamental building blocks in place underneath before the services emerge on top Indeed. of it. Yep. And and that that for me was a, a blocker in my prior role as an enterprise uh, mobility manager. Um, I couldn't adopt services from, from the operator community because I didn't have coverage universally available and I wanted to unwire my employees but I didn't want to anger them by having to rewire them and reprovision the old services when they moved to a part of our campus that didn't have coverage. Right. One of the major controversies at the moment, Art, is about what's being generically called LTEU or mm -hmm. LAA in standard speak, um, yes. which is about LTE across the public spectrum. How do you think LTEU should be viewed? And let me put it in context for you. There seem to be two schools of thought. 
those that are critical of it and say this is no more than yet another attempt by the big telcos to strong arm themselves into the market to get a hammerlock on a competition and milk it for all it's worth until it's bled dry if you can milk <laughs> something until it's bled dry um, or the other side of the argument is that um, it's ultimately, in the end, it's going to be a user-friendly method of aggregating data to provide a better service for all users. Now, do you sit in either of those camps, or do you sit on the fence between them? Um, we believe it's a very interesting, evolving initiative. You know, the, the, the bigger question outside of exactly how it'll be implemented is uh, customer acceptance. So, so inside an enterprise office building and in and, and, and these venues, it, it may be considered unlicensed spectrum from a regulatory perspective, but the facility owner considers it licensed to them. So you're in a situation where the facility owner or the IT people might say, you know, I love your stuff, bring in your small cells, but leave that off because I'm afraid of interference with my production infrastructure that all my computers are on every day for, for Wi-Fi. Yeah. And in other places, they're going to maybe go, to, go for blessing to their incumbent Wi-Fi vendor and say, uh, my operator wants to bring this in. What do you think? Have you tested against it? So, so I think it's going to be more uh, case by case, and it's going to be driven by customer acceptance. Um, some of the things we've heard from our customers is uh, uh, there's a lot more interest in LTE AAA with the listen before talk because of the fear that of the the dominance that LTEU could potentially do if it's misconfigured. So we're, you know we're we're seeing we're seeing people that are some people are educated other people are not, um, and it's 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 a number of years of work to do and the and the operator community will have to you know partner with the Wi-Fi community to help you know get it socialized and get the enterprise uh, people that are the gatekeepers to the buildings to say I agree I I don't agree and you know work it work through it. I was interested in your diplomatic choice of word, misconfigured. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, it's, it, it, when I look at what Qualcomm has re re you know, re released as information on how LTU functions, yeah. you can allocate a certain amount of time slots uh, within, within the band to, 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 to the LTU gear or LTU uh, waveform. Yeah. And, and there's a concern that if it, you can allocate so much of the spectrum to yourself and it's not under the control of the enterprise. So that's why the listen before talk implementation of LTE AAA is more attractive because there's the, 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 you know that the operator is not guaranteed to dominate you if there's a mistake. Thank you. Good answer. <laughs> like it. Okay, let's move on finally then to to 5G, which we've, we've, we've mentioned more than once in passing here. But how important do you think small cells are going to be? for 5G and for 5G to work in the way that people are being led to believe it will work? Foundational. You have to have coverage capacity. And, and the other thing that, that we think is occurring is a lot of decomposition of certain parts of the cloud computing architecture to the edge of the network mm -hmm. to provide a lot more robust APIs locally so that you, 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 you kind of move some of the processing around and don't kill the backhaul with um, you know, quite a bit of processing back to the cloud core. Okay, well, thanks very much, uh, Art King. I can now say, well, I will say, in fact, that this morning I interviewed King Arthur, <laughs> even though you're from uh, somewhere just south of the Shetland. But it's been a pleasure to meet you, and thank you very much indeed. Thank you.